In this video, we'll be discussing about the non-cyclic electron flow in that scheme form. And we also will be discussing about the cyclic electron flow briefly. Both non-cyclic and cyclic electron flow occurs in light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. In non-cyclic electron flow, the electrons flow from photosystem 680 to photosystem 700, then to ferredoxine, then to FNR, that's ferredoxine NAD plus reductase, and finally to NADP plus. Ultimately, we get the NADPH from this electron flow, which is later used in the light-independent reactions. Then we have cyclic electron flow, where electrons flow from P680 to P700 to peridoxine and then from here the electrons flow back to P700 through cytochrome B6F complex, thus creating a cyclic electron flow. And from this electron flow we get the direct generation of ATPs, where protons are used to generate ATPs through ATP synthase. Now let's get to the mechanism of electron flow through Z scheme form. Here in this diagram on the left side, we have the reduction potentials. It must be noted that the up we go, the lower reduction potential we have in this diagram, like in negatives. A species at lower reduction potential will have a tendency to lose electrons to a species at higher reduction potential. Like if we have two species here, species X at minus 2 and species Y at minus 1. Then the electrons will flow from species X to species Y. As species Y has more reduction potential than species X, so electron flow is favored towards the species Y. Now let's start the electron flow. And for this we move on to photosystem second. First of all, for the initiation of electron excitation, we need external source of energy, which is provided in the form of photons from light. Here in this diagram we have the photosystem second P680. It absorbs the photons and gets excited to a higher state. The absorption is done through light harvesting complex of chlorophyll A and excites the electrons to higher states as we have already seen that. It's actually the special pair D1 and D2 of chlorophyll molecule which are excited upon absorption of photons. Now we have energized and excited electrons with P680 and these high energy electrons are then transported to nearby pheophytin molecule. As we know pheophytin is at higher reduction potential than excited pair of P680. So excited P680 easily gives off electrons to the pheophytin molecule. Then we see here the P680 comes back at its initial state after losing electrons. So we have oxidized P680 denoted as P680 plus. And this oxidized P680 plus is a very strong oxidant. So it's always hungry for electrons to stabilize itself. So for that we have a water molecule here, which is acted upon by oxygen evolving complex in presence of manganese molecules. The complex drives oxidation of water, where we get 4 electrons, oxygen molecule and 4 protons. The electrons are fed to oxidized P680 plus and is reduced back to its original state, that's P680. Then again the same cycle continues. So now let's get to pheophytin, which has just received the electrons from excited P680 photosystem. The pheophytin transports the electrons to plastoquinone A, then it transports the electrons to the plastoquinone B, then to cytochrome B6F complex and then finally the plastocyanin receives the electrons. Now let's keep the electrons with plastocyanin molecule. On the other hand, when we look for the photosystem first, that's P700, it also absorbs the photons as shown in the diagram and gets excited to higher energy state with its electrons as shown in the animation. Now the excited P700 easily gives off its energized electrons to the electron acceptor A0, which is actually the modified chlorophyll molecule, and P700 itself gets oxidized. Now the oxidized P700 comes back to its initial state but it's short of electrons as it has been oxidized. Now to compensate for the lost electron, we have the plastocyanin on the left with electrons at lower reduction potential. So here the oxidized P700 at higher reduction potential grabs the electron from plastocyanin and gets reduced. And then again the cycle continues when the photons hit the P700 molecule. Now let's get back to the A0 which is the modified chlorophyll 
which has just received the electrons from p700. Now from here the electrons are transported to A1 which is the phylloquinone. Then they are transported to iron sulfur proteins that's Fs and this Fs then transfers the electron towards the pyridoxin as shown in the diagram. Then we have the FNR enzyme which grabs electrons from pyridoxin and transfers them to NADP+. And in the meanwhile the protons released on the oxidation of water are hereby used for the reduction of NADP+. Thereby reducing the NADP plus to NADPH as shown in the diagram. So this is our non-cyclic electron flow through Z scheme. Now if we go for cyclic electron flow, then we have no use of FNR and NADP plus molecule in that case. So we see here when the electrons reach the ferredoxin molecule, the ferredoxin transfers the receiver electron to cytochrome B6F complex back, which is at higher reduction potential than ferredoxin. So the transfer is easily favored. And in this way we get the cyclic electron flow. And by this mechanism the protons are getting generated which are then used to generate ATP molecules by ATP synthase. So this is how cyclic and non-cyclic electron flow is driven through Z scheme according to their respective reduction potentials. I hope you like the video. If you like it give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.